Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today and we're getting into a Todd Howard interview. It looks like we may be hearing a lot from Todd in the coming weeks as we have this interview to go over, which talks about the likes of Starfield, Elder Scrolls 6, and of course Skyrim's 10th anniversary, but also Todd Howard's doing an AMA on Reddit the day before Skyrim anniversary comes out. And we know Todd, he's a man who just uh, runs his mouth a little bit too much, probably for the PR who has nightmares about when Todd does an interview. And so we get a little bit more information. We get a good look on what's happening with Bethesda Game Studios. And it's pretty important because that's typically rare. So we're going to be sifting through some highlights of an interview that just happened between Todd Howard and Ryan McCaffrey on IGN Unfiltered. And again, we're going to get into things like the Elder Scrolls 6 wait. Is it ideal or not? Why did it take so long to get to this point to make Elder Scrolls 6? Is now the time for Starfield? Some systems in Starfield, which Todd doesn't go into complete detail with, but he gives us a little bit to imagine and much more so if you're new here and you're looking for bethesda news and information you're in the right place we're gonna be doing a lot of skyrim content in the coming weeks so keep your eyes locked here and now let's listen to an interview with todd howard what do you think was there anything that the team really got wrong or that you still kind of look back and go uh? <laughs> there are a number of parts of it where we don't go deep enough where it's a it's a veneer in terms of its interactivity. Yeah. It's okay, whatever that system is, you know, how deep can we make it? The other part is the way the AI and the NPCs really react to you is something that um, I think we still have a long way to, to go with. I want to shout out that clip first because there's always been this idea around Bethesda having a bit of an ego, right? And I think that began with Fallout 4 and then transitioned to 76 where they kept going away from what made the series truly great. And while I thought Fallout 4 was a good game, yeah, it didn't feel like the most Fallout of games. And so hearing Bethesda just being self-critical, specifically Todd Howard, on things they could do better, I thought it was interesting heading into Starfield where he says it's a more hardcore RPG, that something that they wish they did better with Skyrim was the depth of their systems. And so that makes me think just a little bit into the future with what he's saying with Starfield on what we can maybe expect. Plus, the AI in BGS games, um, yeah, it's not that good. So well, let's hope with the, the next gen only Starfield, we get somewhat functioning AI. And Skyrim's music um, has always been a part of its identity. We start with music. We usually the game we start, we do concept art, we do interface, we really? do music. That's interesting. I... So um, even Starfield, one of the first things we did was the music. Um, and it sets as you're drawing things and seeing it on the screen, you put it to the music, it gives you more of a complete feeling of this is the tone of the game. I thought this was a really interesting point of design. Nothing that will tell you anything about Starfield other than the soundtrack is probably mostly done at this point in time. But as someone who's working on a game, we're waiting towards the later part of our development to make the music for our game because we want to create the tone visually, writing wise, all that stuff. So it's really, to me in particular, at least fascinating to see that there is a very talented, highly productive studio starting off with the music and concept art. But anyway, just a little cool note there. Now. Let's talk Elder Scrolls 6. Let's get into the meat and potatoes, what we're all here for. Let's see why this wait was so long. You know, for me, when I look at franchises, is it, is it, is it vibrant? Okay, is, is Skyrim still is. Um, Elder Scrolls Online is huge. It's one of yeah. the biggest online games in the world, and that, that's part of our company, even though our studio isn't developing it. We work with them. I think they've done an absolutely phenomenal job. So when I look at the Elder Scrolls as a franchise, you know, is it healthy? Is it doing well? Yes, 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 yes. Would you plan to have the kind of gap we're having between Skyrim and the follow-up? I can't say that's a good thing, right? We, I wish I could wave a wand and, and the game that we want to make and we have in our head, we're starting things on, just came out. We felt doing something like Starfield, something we wanted to do something else for a long time and, and play in a new universe. It's kind of like, well, if not now, I'm going back in time. We started in right after Fallout 4, so 2015, end mm -hmm. of it. If not now, when? And I felt like the when, if we didn't do it then, the when could be never. We, we felt pretty good with where Elder Scrolls was as a franchise, particularly with Elder Scrolls Online. That, yeah. Hey, now's time we can do Starfield. You know, that being said, everything takes longer than, than we would like as well, but we want to make sure we, we get it right. And, um, you know, hopefully Elder Scrolls 6, you don't want to say like, hey, that's worth that kind of weight but that it does stand up to the series as it has been in a really big, impactful way for, for when it comes out. It seems like the main reason for Elder Scrolls Six extremely long, upwards of 15 year wait, is because they chose to do Starfield. 
But the reason they chose to do Starfield right after Fallout 4 was because we thought we would never have a chance to do it if we didn't do it right then. I found that fascinating for one reason in particular, which is Todd Leaf's completely over 76 even existing, which even though in this interview, you'll see him sometimes emphasizing, well, yeah, we worked on it. He just has these moments where he answers and completely leaps over that game, which again solidifies what I've been reporting, what many have been reporting. Like Bethesda Game Studios Maryland did not have this heavy handed involvement that they sort of marketed it as. But it was refreshing to see a acknowledgement that, hey, we don't think it's ideal that Elder Scrolls 6 had to wait this long. And it does fall into the rhythm of conversation we've had in the past. Yeah, this is probably because of Elder Scrolls Online, but how long does ESO have to last? How long can it remain relevant before people get tired and irritable and want something new? And we're going to start to see that same cycle start to attack Fallout, which we'll get into in a little bit as Todd opens up on the future of that series. At the end of the day, I think the health of the studio is the most important. We saw with Fallout 4, as Bethesda's admitted, what happens when they start to get burnt out and that carried right into 76, where we got what I would say is their most uninspired project, to put it generously. And when you see them now reinvigorated working on Starfield, and if that will impact Elder Scrolls 6 in a positive manner, yeah, I'm with everyone here. It sucks. I want ES6 yesterday. But if it means we're going to get a better Elder Scrolls 6 because they had some time to do something new with Starfield, I'm all for it. You have that basis of what you've done before, how people reacted to it. And then, but you still, for us, I like to, you know, wipe the slate clean and say, okay, what does it mean to be a fantasy role-playing game now? The kind of games you want to do where you're stepping into a virtual world. What does that mean? Don't think about making a sequel. Right. Start fresh. I thought that little brief snippet there was important to hear because it can sort of check expectations on what to expect in something like Elder Scrolls 6 or Fallout 5 and why in a lot of ways Fallout 4 felt like a large departure from Fallout 3. It's because when Bethesda makes a new game, they don't think of it as the next entry, a sequel, but almost an original game. And that makes sense because when you look at Elder Scrolls 3 through 5, it does seem to be that way where there are these titans standing on their own, but that design pattern hasn't really panned out as well for Fallout. In fact, Fallout has felt more additive when you look at what Fallout 4 was and you look at 76. That really wasn't the transformative experience like we've seen from Bethesda Game Studios with Elder Scrolls. But when you think about that with something like, I would say, Elder Scrolls 6, don't expect it to be a direct carryover of, oh, these ideas were introduced in Skyrim, so they will be evolved upon in Elder Scrolls 6. That said, I have a firm belief that Bethesda will evolve the battle scale like we saw in Skyrim where you had dragons and like five guards into something like a full-on war. I just think when they talked about how they're waiting for next-gen technology to do the game that they were trying to make with Elder Scrolls 6 and the ideas that they wanted to accomplish, that if they're going for it now, it has to be something along those lines. Anything else, I can't imagine currently. I'm gonna call it pencil on the calendar. <laughs> you've, you've penciled it right now. I don't think any, no game release dates get written in ink anymore until like they've- Yeah, we wrote it pretty hard in that trailer. So. <laughs> well, I wanna ask you about that in a minute, but- um, That and felt then, like some ink, but at, yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that in a second, sure. but- Todd seemed pretty confident about that Starfield date, kind of talking over Ryan and saying, oh, it, it was inked, all right. Like, yeah, we're going for it. I thought that was a, impressive level of confidence. Now, what happens that's interesting, and I've never really seen Todd Howard do this in an interview before, not to sound like an interview connoisseur, but I'll be honest, I just kind of watch anything this guy does. Todd starts to reel it back a little bit throughout the course of the interview, not being as solidified on that release date, because I think he realized he was very committal to the idea, like, it's coming that day and date. And then thought, hey, pandemic, you know, we got to have a work from home situation. We don't know what the transition back into the studio is going to look like. How exactly is this all going to function? You can't read the future. It's a year from now. Things could change. Game development's crazy. And he starts to talk about how, yeah, there's a lot for us to do. We still have a lot left to do. And Ryan asked a very poignant question on the idea of, well, is it just done now and we're just polishing a ton? And Todd kind of evades that question. That was the rumor. I had reported this back in early 2020. That's what I had been told, which is this game was in a polish heavy state. And Todd says, we still have a lot left to do. What that exactly entails, I don't know. But the way Todd seemed very confident up front, like, 
we're gonna hit that date no matter what and then how he reeled it back and then started to evade ryan's more direct questions about what they were still working on seemed very telling to me just something to keep an eye out based off reports which were then wiped away and then what we're seeing now does fallout uh just go to the back of the line as far as main line you know yes there's 76 but as far as the main line fallout right is that going to the back of the line or is that a thing where you've now got an entire uh xbox family at your back and people sure. like in exile and obsidian and is there is there a scenario where you hand fallout off I don't see, look, Fallout's really part of our DNA here. Yeah. We've worked with other people from time to time. I can't say what's gonna happen. You know, we have a one pager on, on Fallout 5, what we wanna do. Again, if I could wave my hand and say, have, have <laughs> right. that out. Um, you know, I'd like to find a way to accelerate what we do, um, but I, I can't really say today uh, or commit to anything what's gonna happen when other than Hey, our cadence is Starfield and then Elder Scrolls. You know, a good interview is when you think of the questions in your head and they happen in real time. Like I'm sitting there going, I hope he asked him something about Fallout. Like I'm dying to know what happens with Fallout. So hey, salute to Ryan. We had him on Defining Duke, excellent guy, but he killed it this interview. This is one of his best in my opinion, because he just hit every nail on the head of like questions I wanted to know, even asking about Fallout. And hey, we got some friends over at Obsidian. We got some friends at Exile. Todd kind of shuts that down saying, Fallout's a part of Bethesda now. I don't like that answer. I don't like that one bit. I don't like this full ownership of IP saying this is ours because when you leave it dormant like you did for Elder Scrolls 6 and as the interview goes on, Todd sort of groans on the idea of like, yeah, it's taking us longer as per usual. Your games take a while and we're willing to wait for that, but we want new stuff in the IP. Like there are people who are only Fallout fans or people who are only Elder Scrolls fans. They need to be fed. And the same thing's about to happen with Starfield, by the way. There needs to be a little bit of, I'd say, just a loose leash on something like Fallout, which you inherited, by the way. It's not like I would understand with Elder Scrolls or even Starfield where it's like, hey, this is ours. We made this thing. We built it up. It's like, no, Fallout you inherited and then tried to make it your own. And now it's sort of on weak legs, maybe transitioning it over to someone else. But he also talks about how they have a Fallout 5 one pager, as in like a design doc, a script of, hey, here's the concept for when we do Fallout 5, what it'll be like. That was encouraging to hear that, hey, they're gonna do another Fallout game. It seems like they have a plan to at least make one eventually. But if we're talking Elder Scrolls 6 in 2025, 2026, then we're thinking Fallout 5 in 2030? Oh my God. So wait, I'm 26 now and I will be in my mid 30s. No, I'm not. No, not when Xbox owns Bethesda, Inexile, and Obsidian. I'm not waiting till my mid 30s to play another mainline Fallout game. Like I refuse. You talked about like going from Morrowind to sure to Oblivion. Or, or we we're probably going to be seeing that really again with Starfield and Elder Scrolls Six, right? From there, from uh, compared to Skyrim, it's been a huge jump. It's 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 probably our biggest ever. I could say Morrowind to Oblivion. That would, had been our biggest. This now feels bigger to us. Um, and we felt it was time and, and we could really take advantage of the new systems, you know, redoing the render and the, the basic underlying guts of the engine itself. Yeah. And that, um, you know, the results on the screen, we're very, very happy with. It's taking us longer as always than we would like. I think myself and many other members of this community need to just pat ourselves on the back real quick. We have been saying for a while that, hey, when you look at Morrowind and then Oblivion, there is a huge technological leap. And that when you hear Bethesda and how they're talking about Starfield, it's quite reminiscent of the leap that Oblivion made. And to hear Todd Howard go like, yeah, it's actually bigger than that. Of course, that's his opinion. And Todd has at times been a bit hyperbolic, so we need to keep that in mind, but it's very encouraging to hear nonetheless, because Bethesda, they're never talking their tech. They're always talking about the stories, the factions, the interaction, everything they do with the game, but never anything ever on the level of technical prowess. So the fact that this was even answered in a way with some level of confidence, I thought was 
impressive because the only time I've seen them get technically confident is hilariously with Fallout 76 where they're like, yeah, we got an online game running on that creaky old engine. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> you know, so it's actually really nice to hear them talk about this with a single player RPG. Of course, Oblivion was really a mind bending game for its time with its scope and scale, but with its procedurally generated terrain, it made the world feel infinitely bigger than anything we had seen at that time. I mean, you think of all the dungeons you could explore and storylines you could experience, people that you could talk to, it was unlike anything before. So to think of that with Starfield, where we saw the dialogue count already, which is over 150,000, this should be a gigantic game. It's part of our DNA, right? So those things that we like, being able to touch the world and, you know, what are you looting from people and how do the factions? So I think there is, there is more Skyrim in terms of game structure in Starfield. Now that you mention it, the way the factions work, the skill system is, is really, really, uh, really, really like the skill system in Starfield. And it borrows a bit from things we've done in Fallout and Elder Scrolls. So I think this is part of our DNA. You're going to see those hallmarks in kind of anything we do that is, as you say, kind of a mainline yeah. uh, Bethesda game. So Starfield is confirmed to have a skill system and it borrows from things like Fallout and Elder Scrolls. Now with Fallout, we know the skill system is more of a list of in combat and out of combat things that you can use in speech checks, but also to interact with world objects and you progress them each time you level up. While Elder Scrolls skills are progressed through, at least recently with Skyrim and Oblivion, through doing things in the world. Like you use one-handed a lot, so your one-handed goes up. A hybrid of that where let's think it's like Fallout where you tag three skills and those things can be used in and out of combat, but as you use them in and out of combat, they evolve over time and they probably have their own perk trees as we saw in Skyrim. That doesn't sound too bad. Again, what we're looking for with Bethesda Game Studios now is true depth. You don't really have to worry and look over your shoulder anymore. you got Xbox there. So I'm looking for Bethesda to go hard with Starfield. When they say this is a more hardcore RPG than what we made recently, I'm hoping that this system just begs me to do multiple builds like Skyrim did and to a lesser extent Fallout 4 did. But I want them to go balls to the wall with this where as I get deeper into the game, like I've said with Bethesda Game Studios, I want to not be able to access everything. Like I want to go down a path with a character. And once I go down that path, it's like, all right, this is who you are. Like you're the ranged character who can use X, Y, and Z. But if you go back and replay the game, you can be the melee character who can use X, Y, and Z. That's what I like in my games. I know some people don't even replay their games, so they're not interested in that. They just want to access everything. I think that sort of defeats the purpose of role playing where you play a role, but again, different blokes, different strokes. First, when I executive produce things, that's a game that I'm kind of checking in on, right? It's not a daily thing. It might yeah. be once a week, it might be once a month, depending on the state of the game. And then, so there's a number of things I kind of executive produce. And then if I'm directing a game, that's more of a daily activity. Right. And I pitched this game and we almost made it. This was like 10, 12 years ago. Okay. And you know, hey, fast forward to kind of current day and now they're part of Disney and they're starting to license. I got a conversation with somebody there that mm -hmm. I know, John Drake, who I was, know him was well, a Sony, yeah. love John. And we, we got to chatting with, and I said, oh, I have this Indiana Jones game. And he was like, tell me more. I'm like, is this possible? They're making the game. I'm involved creatively. Like, hey, what's the game going to be? What's the, I had this original story and we've worked on it sort of together. So I spent a little bit of time on it there. It's there, you know, they're running with it. They're doing an amazing job. And so I'm just happy to, to lend a hand and be involved. I thought this was nice to hear because this was something I was telling a lot of people, which was, hey, Indiana Jones isn't going to impact, say, Starfield or Elder Scrolls Six. Like executive producer is exactly as Todd defined it. You know, he just kind of sits there and checks in on things once a week, sometimes once a month. That's a very much a role that works best for PR, because if you remember, it was Todd Howard working on Indiana Jones alongside Machine Games. But what was really cool to hear is that this was a idea he had a decade ago, and then he carried it into a conversation with someone he knew at Disney, which then developed into a story that he had made himself and some of the ideas for the game that he had brought to Machine Games. So in a lot of ways, this is Todd Howard's ideas just being taken all the way to the finish line with machine games. For him, it's probably pretty satisfying to not be on the ground floor, making sure like everything is just right. Just saying, hey, here are the ideas. Have fun, have a good time, enjoy. So we'll see how that one turns out. I, I wanna know what's going on Wolfenstein 3 on a separate note, because we know that's happening. It's just like, are you doing Indiana Jones first? What's going on with that? 
I would love to know that, but obviously Todd Howard wouldn't have that answer, and it'd be kind of strange to ask him that. But anyway, I thought all of this was a great roundup of tidbits and information on the future of Fallout, Starfield, and even Elder Scrolls VI. So what do you think of everything Todd Howard had to say in this video? Fire away in the comments down below. I'm very excited to see your thoughts. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below, along with my Patreon. And a big thank you to everyone who's been signing up, supporting. I, I really do appreciate it. And we have a lot more content on the way. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.